Okay, corona, coronavirus and uh, selfishness. Um, there, there are, you know, so I would say the best way to see the coronavirus, I mean, it's complicated because there's levels of consciousness. Levels of consciousness mean how much repressed fear, shame and guilt, and how many limiting beliefs do I hold. Also gets a bit more complicated than that because there's the limiting beliefs in my software, my ego, you know, the beliefs that I do. And there's also an aspect of being able to pick up limiting beliefs from the collective consciousness. So I might have a, you know, I might have like a hundred limiting beliefs, like I'm ugly, I'm fat, uh, I can't, you know, I'm not a, uh, money is difficult for me, whatever these beliefs are. But also, I could pick, I could just suddenly go into the world or read the newspaper and suddenly have new beliefs. I had a hundred beliefs this morning, and now I go into the world and watch the news, and now I have 125 beliefs at the end of the day. So there's personal beliefs and there's collective belief systems that I can pick up. Also, there's levels of consciousness, meaning uh, how much repressed emotions have I got by acting out. Now, acting out can be things like eating donuts to numb out feelings, or uh, it could be alcohol, it could be drugs, it could be, uh, uh, it could be sex, it could be debting and shopping and spending, it could be Netflix, uh, it could be various other distraction mechanisms. So just like, um, let's pretend babies are born pure, and I could say something different. It's like they're just empty all the time. And whenever they have, you know, if, if, even if a feeling comes up, they express it and it's gone. You know, they don't usually eat a donut or have a, a, a bottle of vodka because they've got an unpleasant. So all the feelings come and are released, so they're empty. And they haven't, you haven't yet got that many belief systems. So with uh, what happens is when you learn control mechanisms to stop the feelings, whether it's eating donuts, drinking alcohol, taking drugs, watching Netflix, um, whatever it is, debting, shopping, uh, you know, eBay, Amazon, whatever it is, to just distract from just allowing those things just to pass through, then you get what's called banks of repressed feelings. You get more and more repressed fear, and these, these, this repressed fear and shame and guilt, uh, plus all the limiting beliefs, then give you an experience which tie you to your level of consciousness. I, you might feel very fearful, trapped in your body, and have lots of fearful thoughts, and feel like eating donuts and drinking alcohol all the time. So that's a level of consciousness. Now, the thing is, like, um, The Course in Miracles says, I mean, it's fair enough, you know, the, you could say the, there's fear and there's the grades of fear. We could say fear, and grades of fear are shame, guilt, um, uh, pride and anger, uh, uh, some of the grades of the different types of fear and separation. But the course likes to talk about guilt. I think guilt is very, um, with something like the uh, coronavirus, I think guilt is the major one because when there's a lot of repressed and fear, when there's a lot of repressed guilt and shame, it's like, the, you know, symbolically guilt means I need to be punished. Yeah. The, the energy is crying out for punishment, guilt, you know, so all the thing, the amount of repressed guilt and fear is now trying to pick up either from internal belief systems or collective belief systems, something that can manifest, because the guilt is just an energy, it's a vibration, it needs, it needs to hook into a belief system to express that guilt. Okay, now, um, I'm going to say, like, someone who's got so much guilt and fear, like, is full of guilt and fear, and is probably full of addiction, and is trying to control everything, is going to attract something very fearful and guilty, you know, because that level of fear is just going to suck up a belief system to express that level. So if you're going to get a life-threatening illness, what, you know, it's like the, that level, I mean, you can, you won't complicate it by talking about karma as well, but that's another dimension. But you're going to suck up a, a, a belief system which is in order of magnitude of the level of fear and guilt you're holding. So it's like a, that's like a magnet and they will just pick up an internal. So you get, you have the life-threatening illnesses, then you have, um, uh, then you have mild ones or, or coughs and colds, 
or you might have a sneeze and you're over it, depending on what level of consciousness you're at, is what you attract. Um, now, why do, you know, like, uh, now let's talk about, um, and I know I'm rambling, but I do like, I do like the topic of health. And um, so, the highest levels of consciousness, you know, the, the saints, like Mother Teresa, you know, if you're lucky enough just to walk past Mother Teresa, I think this is how she got her sainted. Like someone just came, they had cancer, they met Mother Teresa, and then they had an, something like they have an x-ray and the cancer just vanished, just like that. Just to be in the presence of a saint. Because now I've had white light spiritual experiences, met teachers who, who've uh, transcended all their illnesses through, through the miraculous. The miraculous, and it's kind of obvious to me, I just sort of describe, describe this thing where I have absolute faith. I mean, there is karma and it's your time to go, fair enough. But when, when the, the light of consciousness is so strong within and you've let go of your oppressed fear and your shame and cancelled out that belief and prayed for a miracle around it, when the light's so strong, anything of, that's of limitation and darkness is just wiped out of consciousness. It's like the only, the only the root for something horrible to happen to the body is you know fear guilt and limiting belief systems so if you've got that that's like the groundwork for for death of the body I mean, there is a time to go but generally it's the fear and the limiting beliefs that are, are the fertile ground and uh the um so but what i mean i just want to give you know maybe i should do okay self no self i'm going off topic selfishness okay now, I, I like, you know, I mean, people should just study Dr. Hugh Len. Not really, I haven't studied him myself, but I understand what he's done. He's a mystic. You know, I, I'm, I'm not an expert on him. But I, I do know what he's talking about by clearing the data. You know, you forgive and you clear the data. I mean, um, meaning that when you see data of fear and limitation, you know, now, if, if you want to be something like a saint or an avatar, or, or um, yeah, saint or avatar is the right thing. What you're doing is you're, you're clearing the collective of negative data. You know, you're, you're transcending. So all he did, because ultimately as you let go of the separation, you realize you're one with everyone. And as you tune into the greater power of the infinite power and light of God, then you are now an instrument which is able to clear data from the collective consciousness. That, that is what an avatar or a saint is, is doing. All he's doing, he's what I call a mystic, I, I believe uh, Dr. Yulen was a mystic. I'm showing this stuff because of the power of consciousness and the power of someone in the light clearing the data of fear and limitation from the thing. It's like a vacuum, so he just got the, he got, you can find this out, he's quite famous. I mean, that's why I talk about him. All the, most of the saints are not famous, so you don't find out what they've done. But it's like he just forgave the data of what they've done. This guy is likes running people over with his car and this person's an axe murderer and he just cleared the data if he gave them um, but he's in the oneness he's collected to he's collected to the absolute forgiving light of consciousness so he just clears the data and everyone in that prison gets well and they close the prison down it's a true story isn't that powerful i mean i, I mean probably if you read the bible there's a few miracles happening in that one as well <laughs> but, and, uh, and, you know, the saints, so it's known, I mean, in India they call it the cities. You know, everyone will just run, run off to the local guru, hoping if they've got cancer or, or whatever illness you've got, hoping that that light will just, just transform it out of you. And that's true. At that level of light, nothing of negativity and darkness is just washed out. However, what about people of different, okay, selfishness. So... Yes, it's possible to be selfish uh, with, like, what if, so there was a question, what if uh, there's mass hysteria of fear around coronavirus and you don't want to go to a group in case you kill everyone and, uh, and then you're, you're selfishly responsible for mass murder or something like that? It's a good question. Again, um, you know, there's also karma in the picture. Uh, it's unlike, it's possible, I think, out of karmic thing, but there's lots of karmic contracts. You could say all of life is just the un, is due to karmic setups. Nothing is happening by accident. 
Uh, if you can muscle test, you'll find even that those things that seem to be accidental are not accidental. So, um, like, for example, I mean, on average, if you do muscle testing is kinesiology. I, I'll try and explain it later in another video. But uh, you, can, you can check out. There is a <coughs> way of, of connecting to all the data that ever existed through just checking muscle strength. And if you check, um, uh, most spiritual seekers have about 15 past lifetimes. So that's a lot of karmic interactions. Like, you know, th you know five lifetimes ago, I was probably a mass murderer. You know, going around, uh, actually, I was, I was actually a, probably a property bandit and bad trader, but, uh, uh, and taking everyone's money. So in this lifetime, what happens is, you know, I have a lot of financial problems with money and property. And uh, so it's like what, so it's like there's a, a karmic, it's called karmic undoing. You know, like I, I, I tend to, to, to rob people out of properties. I give you a new home, which was with a leaking roof and then took your rent for it, or whatever I did, or probably stole your property. So those things come back, and um, that's what's called a karmic undoing. Sometimes you don't have to do a karmic undoing if you clear it. Uh, before that, everything I say, take what you want, leave the rest if it's uh, not, not going. But in terms of selfishness, yes, that can happen. Uh, I would say, um, I, you know, it depends on the level of consciousness of the spiritual seeker as to what selfishness means. I mean, having um, used the methods Dr. Hawkins said to let go of several major illnesses through clearing, I feel all the feelings out, feel the guilt and the fear out, and cancel your belief in it. Um, now, someone who's in fear, and uh, I would say, Ultimately, um, uh, you know, the course talks about magical stuff. Like if you take a, like if you take a pill, or if you have nowadays it would be sanitizer gel or tissues or whatever it is, <laughs> dental tissues or whatever it is, it'll be, those things actually work. You know, within the collective belief system, if you pop, pop it, you know, if a doctor says to you, this pill is going to cure your cancer, that actually does work in quite a lot of cases. So, it, and if the mass thing is like if you wipe your hands and wash your hands for every 10 minutes, uh, then, and that's a strong belief system going around, that actually does work. So even though it's a magical thing, so and Hawkins would say just do everything on all levels. So, um, you know, wash your hands uh, and, uh, and, then, uh, and then do the spiritual stuff as well. Now I would say, a, <coughs> you know, just... Just imagine, like someone like Jesus or Buddha, you know, you know, it's going to blast out most of, a lot of illnesses just to be in that level of light and presence and miracles. So that's far more powerful. But if you are at a low level of consciousness, full of fear, then <clears throat> I say, you know, my my view is that all the people full of fear are not that dangerous. It's um, it the people in fear are dangerous to other people in fear basically. <clears throat> I don't know if that makes sense. More, more what's catching is fear and belief systems rather than, I mean, I don't actually believe there is such a thing as coronavirus. I believe that's a global manifestation of guilt and fear, which has then created the belief system, coronavirus, and then the, 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 the symptoms that this should have. And then everyone's just catching the belief system. And, and you only get it if you've got fear in you and you're susceptible to catching that belief system. So the way to undo it, I'm not, I'm, I, please do, I mean, take all the advice, but I, I think one of the ways, uh, you do everything, take the advice, but I would take the advice, wash your hands, but I wouldn't pay attention to like, you know, being in fear and paranoid fear and just washing my hands and you know, uh, all the time, because just do the practical, very lightly in a detached manner and I think that is, that is not being self, that is, that is the practical thing. But to hold it in fear and be paranoid around it, I think is not useful. To do, I would do the practical actions in terms of selfishness, because sometimes magical belief systems do work. So take the practical actions, um, and, but the more important thing is the spiritual st stuff as well, alongside. So, you know, um, if you want to do it, it's like, you know, I really believe anyone of the light 
when someone who's very spiritually advanced goes into a room, that's doing more in a way, potentially, to clear coronavirus out because that light and that love and that faith, you know, the evidence of no fear, you know, when that illuminates into the room, everyone is going to be more immune to coronavirus for the rest of the day than if they stayed at home in paranoid fear. Mm -hmm. It would still get you in your home just watching the videos on, on like, this is, these are the symptoms you should display if you've got coronavirus and just watch that for 24 hours, go into a state of panic and watch that every day alone in the room. And, you know, you, you start, you know, if someone keeps telling you these are the symptoms you should have non-stop and you go into a state of fear, I think that is more... Going to high spiritual vibration groups will actually, like, you'll start to tune into that vibration. Like, um, the Course talks it, what is it? It's like there's an invincible place. There's an invincible stillness, which is, you know, one, once you're one with that, there is no fear of catching something limited. Or, or even hooking on to that limited belief. So for me, um, wash your hands, but actually if you're of the light and you go into any place or, or go into a group and you, you emit that light and confidence into the room, you're going to do more to save people from coronavirus than uh, potentially someone who's in fear of washing their hands non-stop. And I don't know that sounds a bit, because there's different levels of consciousness, so it's not that big, but like if Jesus walks into the room, Buddha walks into the room, and everyone's in, you know, terrified of coronavirus, after they've been in that presence, they won't get coronavirus for the rest of the day. Now, if someone just spent their day in fear and thinking about coronavirus, like a higher percentage of those people will manifest it. Uh, so, so... There's, take the practical, but actually, I think what's going to save, what's really needed in the world, to do the practical, but as people of light, emitting that light and that love, and absolutely having no fear of coronavirus, that's infectious as well. You know, having zero fear and emitting a lot of light. Like, going to spiritual groups, in a way, is an immunity to the fear and the negative paranoia. I mean, really, it's a belief system of fear. So that's what I need immunity to. So if I go and meditate, or I go to a spiritual group of a high vibration, that will do more to protect me from coronavirus than washing my hands alone in my room and going into a state of paranoid fear. Okay, thank you for letting me share that.